Adobe just announced their new Firefly video model where you can generate video clips just using text prompts and images. I put a link below where you can join the waitlist. I have early access, so let's jump in and I can show you what it can do. Earlier this year, I made a short about the new generative AI that is coming to Premiere Pro. And this teased at things like object removal, object addition, clip extensions, and generating B-roll in your timeline. And a lot of you have asked, what's the update on that? When I was at IBC, I did speak with the Adobe Firefly video team, and they told me they are working on getting the generative extend into the Premiere Pro beta by the end of this year. And if you look at their blog post here, which covers what generative extend is, basically it allows you to extend clips to cover gaps in footage, smooth out transitions, or hold on shots longer for perfectly timed edits. So keep an eye out for that, hopefully by the end of this year. And just to note that all of the generative AI that will be available inside of our pro applications like Premiere Pro are first tested in Adobe Firefly Online, just like the text image tools, which you can test out right now. So let's first outline a few use cases of this Adobe Firefly video model. So Adobe Firefly video model is not designed to generate an entire film for you. In fact, the first use case that Adobe says on their blog here is to essentially generate missing B-roll, like gaps in your timeline or complementary shots. For example, here they show an example of an aerial shot of a desert that they generated using this prompt. Now, if there's a missing establishing shot in your video where it needs to show the location, you could perhaps use Adobe Firefly to generate this missing clip. Another example is generating the complementary clip. So here's the original video clip of this young girl with a magnifying glass, but what if we want a point of view shot? So Adobe Firefly was able to produce this point of view shot here detailed extremely macro close-up view of a white dandelion viewed through a large red magnifying glass. And then here you get the combined sequence of both the shots together. On their blog, they also talk about how Adobe Firefly video can be used to add atmospheric elements. For example, this flame overlay was generated and then using After Effects rotoscoping, they were able to combine the original video clip with the effect. Now, Firefly cannot combine these two clips together automatically for you. There's still that intervention of knowing how to use After Effects and create that rotoscoping to make this effect happen. And the third use case is to generate ideation for different styles of animations that you wanna produce. For example, they have the stop motion animation that Adobe Firefly created this hand-drawn simple line art, different examples here. And I did test out a few as well, and I was pleasantly surprised at how well it created these. You can also generate different styles of effects for text. For example, this one right here that they have a macro detailed shot of water splashing and freezing to spell the word ice. And the fourth use case that they outlined is uploading a still image and then adding movement to that. So for example, you can combine it with a completely new video clip. So this was the reference image that was uploaded. And then the prompt said, zoom out of the galaxy to reveal that it is contained inside the pupil of a human eye. Detailed macroscape. So as you can see from these four different use cases, that it's not generating a full film for you, but it does help with ideation. So to show you how well the Adobe Firefly video model works, I'm going to create a mock commercial for a tennis ball company to help me ideate the visuals so then I could potentially pitch it and get the commercial produced. Now, the idea for this commercial is that the world has gone tennis ball crazy. So some of the shots I wanna produce in this commercial would be hard to create, but using Adobe Firefly, I can bring them to life very easily rather than going out and buying a million tennis balls to create these shots. All right, so I'm excited to see how it works. Let's start thinking of a list of different shots we would want to create. All right, so here we are inside of the beta of the Firefly video generation. And on the left, you can see the model. The aspect ratio right now is limited to widescreen. Of course, they'll probably have more in the future. And then the frame rate right now, it's at 24. What's really cool is you can choose a camera angle and motion as well. So for camera angle, you can choose aerial shot, eye level shot, high angle, low angle, and top down. Let's try eye level shot first. And let's try a tilt down. And then you can just describe the scene the best you can. The more detail, the better. And you'll get better at how you can describe 
these different shots. So for example, let's say a swimming pool full of hundreds of tennis balls and then hit generate. I've generated a bunch of these and I can confirm that each generation takes less than two minutes. And what's really cool is it gives you this little progress here. So it starts to go around the circle until it's completed. As part of this generation process, generating a whole film of thousands of shots would take a lot of time, right? That's why it's not realistic, but generating a few different shots for a visual storyboard like we're doing is great because we can help bring our story to life to then go on and produce it in real life. All right, so this is our first generation here. So you can see that that's what it did. It's tilting down into the balls. There is some weird stuff happening here. Like is that black thing, was it trying to be something else? But that's okay because we're just trying to get the idea across. It's not trying to be perfect. So what I did is I went through and I had two different tabs essentially, and I was generating as many different shots as I can get. You can see that it actually shows you a line of all of the shots you generated beneath the first generation here. And on the left, I chose a low angle shot. And in terms of motion, I chose a tilt up. The first one was a realistic Boeing 747. The exterior is painted with a thousand tennis balls. There's a lot of flying tennis balls around, but it does the job. So then you can click here and download this and you can go on to generate more. So you can see here, I generated one where I wanted tennis balls on a highway instead of cars. I also did a low angle shot and moved to the left. And you can see it slowly moves to the left like it's on a dolly. It's not perfect, but it gets the idea across. This shot was really cool. It actually worked out really great. This was a static low angle shot of tennis balls falling instead of coconuts. I also wanted the buttons of an elevator to be tennis balls, but it only put one tennis ball and like the finger here was another flop of this guy trying to swim. <laughs> and it's just really struggling. This one worked out pretty well. People walked down the street holding umbrellas made out of tennis rackets and it is raining millions of tiny tennis balls. I used part of this clip because in the beginning that lady's face was kind of scary. A tea kettle in the shape of a tennis ball. It produced this clip and I took a still image of that clip. I uploaded that image here and I said steam coming from the tennis ball teapot and then it created this new shot from that generation. So that's one way that you can get consistency is by taking a still shot and then adding motion through a prompt afterwards. So it struggled a bit with tennis ball text. This one was pretty close, but I have no idea why it was animating those lines. Although there were a lot of missed shots, there was enough good shots for me to build about a 50 second commercial from. So I've imported all the best shots from Adobe Firefly video into my timeline here. The only thing missing now is the music, right? Because when you are creating a catchy commercial, you want there to be a catchy music tune that people can remember. Now I have a subscription to Musicbed and they have a great selection of music and a lot of it is catchy and because I don't have the budget to license a huge big time hit I'm gonna see if I can find a hit that can become a hit if that makes sense so of course with music bed you can search and browse manually for example you can go to genre and you can search for like vintage rock you can also search by mood for example if you want a happy track and then you can listen through here a really cool feature of music bed that i use all the time is their ai search by song you can search popular songs that you know that you like the vibe of to find similar tracks in their library so one song that i really like is called escape which is the pina colada song and you can see it comes up here right away you can pretty much search any popular song and it will be identified here. So let's show similar tracks in their library because I want it to be kind of cheeky and retro, right? So let's go through here and let's play a couple songs. So eventually I came down to this one, How Much Is Much by LBS. So the line, how much is much, is just so catchy. I was just waiting to find that track that I could actually feel editing the music to. It was perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and license this and use my creator subscription to use it on my YouTube channel and we can download it. 
right now. So now we can import the track here inside of Premiere Pro. Now the problem is this track is quite long. Now I want my commercial to be around 50 under 60 seconds. What we can try to do is use the remix tool, which is located here, and you can kind of drag it to meet the duration of your clips. But the problem with using remix, when there's lyrics, you can get some strange results and cutoffs. So for example, so it was instrumental and then all of a sudden they were like, I'm missing you. So what I ended up doing is that I ended up taking the last how much is much and making a cut. So right here. And I spliced it with the first one. How much is how much deep is deep. Before he says how much, I'm going to splice it. Then a cut here and then cut out this whole section. And now here, it's basically the second verse of how much, but the ending part. So then I just zoom in here and I can click on this cross dissolve, just to add a tiny little cross dissolve and let's see how this sounds. It works pretty well. Now it's still a bit too long for my liking. So I'm gonna forget the little opening preamble here. Although I like it, it'll be easier to start on the beat here. So right here, let's start here and then delete this part. And then we can just shift it over. I also wanna thank Musicbed for sponsoring this video. And if you wanna try out Musicbed in your own workflow, you can get a two week free trial using my link below. Now you can go in and move the shots around and make sure that each cut is on each beat that you want. And you can use the waveform to make sure that the cuts are exactly where you want them to be. So here we could actually have it be on this beat or when he says let, so we can move this around. So you can press N to create the rolling edit tool to move this, but unfortunately there's no information there. So what we can do is just roll this edit in and shift this over. Cause that's where that clip started. There was no information to roll it to. So you can go through and make sure everything is on beat. And then the only thing missing after the music is of course adding sound effects to these shots to help make it more believable. So for example, adding tennis balls bouncing here, an airplane sound, rain with tennis balls dropping. So I downloaded all these different sound effects. You can see that I stacked them all up here. On some of them, I added some reverb using the essential sound panel just to make sure you could actually hear it and it sounds believable to that scene. You can have outdoor reverb. There's also different presets that you can try out to make sure that the sound matches that scene. And once everything was done, I added uh, just a couple transitions from my gal toolkit here underneath transitions. So this is what it looks like with all the music and the sound effects. <laughs> Love it, love it. I really low key am obsessed with that song. So hey, Dunlop, Wilson, any other tennis ball company, reach out to me, let's produce this commercial. I think it's gonna be awesome. You know, obviously we can launch this next spring before Wimbledon or something, that would be super cool. This entire pitch idea took about five hours of work just going through thinking of ideas and generating some clips. This is not a finished product, but it's an extension of my imagination, right? And I could visualize this almost instantaneously thanks to the help of Adobe Firefly video. So the way I see it is there's kind of two types of AI right now. There's the time-saving AI, which is already built into Premiere. For example, the text-based editing with speech-to-text where you can edit your video using like a Word document, automatic captioning tools, auto color, the 
a remix tool in the auto ducking that's already built inside of Premiere Pro. And now you have this new generative AI that can generate new clips for you. So they're kind of different, right? Now, as of right now, generative AI, it's hard to control. This is why I think it's just best to use as ideation for then producing that final amazing commercial that you wanna produce, for example. But let me know your thoughts. And remember, you can sign up for the waitlist to see when the Adobe Firefly video will be available for you to test as well. And there's a link down below. I also wanna reiterate that Adobe is not sponsoring this video. This is just me testing it out to see what it can do and hopefully give you guys the tools to see how it might be useful in your workflow. So that's all for today's video and yeah, as always, keep creating better video with Gal. See you next time. Bye. Whoop.